Hey guys, C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life. Welcome to my website. And uh, just wanted to uh, say a few words as to why I do what I do and why I have this website to begin with and how you can benefit from it and kind of share a little bit of my story and uh, what is really driving me and motivating me to do this. So it all started with me coming up with the realization that there is a problem. There's a problem with first world society. There is a problem uh, that is beginning to grow. Well, it has been growing for many, many generations, but it is continuing to grow and fester throughout the world. And it has continued to be a serious problem throughout culture uh, all over uh, many nations. And it really comes down to this. Fatherlessness, okay, yeah. First world society, it's mostly a big problem. Third world society, not so much. Okay, yeah, fine, I get it. But fatherlessness. Fatherlessness is a problem because most children do not know their fathers. Most children do not, uh, or let's say they do know their fathers, but then all of a sudden, hey, their fathers are inept. You know what I mean? And there's like a serious lack of maturity and it ends up creating an epidemic of immaturity where basically everybody is immature. Everybody is lacking in maturity everywhere you go. I mean, just talk to women about it. Women have this problem where they just see men everywhere and they're like, wow, they're all man children. Wow, you know, that's, that's really someone to uh, go after. And then when the women find like a real man, a man of nobility, a man of respectability, a man who is going places, they fight all over, they fight with each other just to get that man because it's like an oasis in a desert. It's, it's a desert full of man children. It continues to be a problem everywhere they go, right? Well, it's because of fatherlessness, creating an epidemic of immaturity. So another issue with the fatherlessness is that it leads to an era where no one understands anyone. You used to be able to sit down with people like strangers at, at, you know, reading the newspaper or at a restaurant or at a park bench and have a casual conversation with them about politics and philosophy. Now, apparently, it's too taboo to discuss politics and philosophy, apparently. Oh, because you may have dis you may disagree with me and then I, I, we're just going to have to fight and go to blows with each other. Wow, that is so immature, you know what I mean? How about we just get serious with each other and have mutual respect for each other and have these conversations, you know? That would make sense, but apparently we can't do that anymore. Who knows why? Well, it probably has something to do with the fact that we're xenophobic now. And the xenophobia just leads to us continuing to be treated like cattle everywhere we go. Well, who? Mass cultural ignorance. When there are no fathers teaching their children, it leads to ignorance. And instead, we have to go to the state or the mainstream media for, or the experts for our knowledge. And then it's just continuing to keep us in the dark and continuing to make us ignorant everywhere we go. Wow, what a waste. We continue to be ignorant and this is a serious problem. Why is that? Well, we're conditioned to take the experts at their word. People with credentials, it is natural for us to take at what they say at face value instead of instead of challenging them instead of criticizing them and it comes from sophistry sophistry the modern sophistry is through for example mainstream media outlets and talking heads it's not like the audience can do anything about that the audience can't challenge what's being uh you know said on the television at least back in the old days you get a box of tomatoes and throw it at somebody if they're you know spouting off crap when they're on the stage but you can't do that to a television you know what i mean so it becomes sophistry and it leads to mass cultural ignorance and a mass cultural hypnosis where everyone is just put to sleep instead of like taking responsibility for their own actions and then pointing the fingers at everybody else instead of taking responsibility themselves and then they're just put in this huge lull where they'd rather watch television and play video games instead of being productive. You know what I mean? Like, how useful is that? Oh, great, epidemic of immaturity even more. Wahoo, you know? So this ends up causing a loss of personal sovereignty. A loss of personal sovereignty basically means a loss of self-respect. If you do not respect yourself, no one else is going to respect you, right? That's where that comes in, a loss of personal sovereignty. And because of that loss of personal sovereignty, we end up having things like patriarchy and feminism. Patriarchy is a very pro-male stance. Feminism is a very pro-female stance, but both stances 
destroy the nuclear family, destroy relationships, destroy the mature masculine, destroy the mature feminine. It doesn't matter. It ends up just destroying lives. And because of that, because we're having to, because women are having to compete in the men, uh, the way of men nowadays, women or men are, are, are competing with women as well. I mean, rise of transgenderism, for example, is one way to do that. If you tell people that they can't have sex, they're going to have sex. If you tell a man you can't be a woman, you know what I mean? If you tell a woman that she can't be like a man, it makes sense, right? Patriarchy and feminism is destroying culture as we know it, and that is an issue. Now, of course, many people watching this are like, are you kidding me? You're bashing feminism? It's not about that. It's about what's wise, okay? Obviously, women should get jobs if they want to be. Obviously, women should vote if they want to. I'm not against any of those things. What I am against is women being unhappy. What I am against is women being unfulfilled. What I am against is the same thing for men. I am against immaturity and people losing maturity everywhere they go. That is what I am against. And patriarch and feminism have a problem. How about balance? Balance would be nice. Another thing we have to deal with is fear. There is fear everywhere. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is what makes you less productive. Fear is what keeps you from growing. You have to be willing to grow. You have to be willing to seek failure. If you do not seek failure, if you do not seek the pain that comes as a result of failing, then you will stay ignorant. You will not become wise. I cannot comfort you into wisdom, right? You need wisdom. Everyone needs wisdom. It's the most valuable substance on the planet. Everyone needs wisdom. Wisdom is so critical for everything, but the only way to get it is through suffering. The only way to get it is through failure. Just like Yoda said in Star Wars Last Jedi, failure is the best teacher. It brings wisdom, right? That's the point. So we need to stop being afraid, especially afraid of failure and fear of success as well, and then focus on bettering ourselves. And that comes with having a good respect and love for failure and appreciation for failure because through failure, we actually find success. And that is important with everything that we do. So let's talk about the solutions to these problems. Solution. I have two different ways to go about solutions on this website. So the first one is nature. Human nature is when I start talking about Jungian analytical psychology. It's all about knowing your type and knowing yourself and knowing other people's types and knowing them and knowing them intimately, knowing where their insecurities are, knowing where their worries are, where their weaknesses are, where their strengths are, uh, knowing what could set them off, knowing what, that, what can endear them to you, those types of things. It allows you to have powerful, significant relationships with every human being you come into contact with. That could be your wife, your husband, your children, your grandparents, your parents, their parents, uh, who you work with. Uh, the guy sitting on the corner of the street, you know, uh, down the road, or, or the guy uh, behind, uh, at, at, you know, at the 7-Eleven, for example. It doesn't matter. Any relationship you have is impacted by human nature. A human being is nature plus nurture, and a Venn diagram brought together, and then you have a human being in the middle. Of course, yeah, sure, you could talk about spirituality and the environment, but the ones we're focusing on right now are nature versus nurture. And, and Jungian analytical psychology explores nature, and we will also be exploring human nurture as well to bring them together to have a complete human being. So, treat others the way you want to be treated. This is a solution for nature. This is the, the hidden message behind the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated is this. If you treat others the way you want to be treated, you are holding them accountable to them, to their type, instead of holding them accountable to you and your type. I'm an ENTP, right? So I'm 3% of the world's population, right? Well, that means I'm kind of weird according to everybody else, right? I'm very rare, right? Well, if I want people to be okay with me, like say if there's an ESTJ and have this ESTJ be okay with me, I need to hold him to the standard of being an ESTJ. I need to treat him with respect to him being an ESTJ because thereby doing so, because I'm okay with him being an ESTJ, he would be okay with me being an ENTP, right? Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's what that means. Know thyself. By knowing your type, you know yourself. Just like the Oracle told Neo in The Matrix. Know thyself. It's on the science in Latin. It's up above his head behind him. 
Know thyself. It's important to know who you are and your purpose because if you do not know yourself, how can you know anybody else? If you can't love yourself, how can you love anyone else? We'll talk about that in a second. And then truly know others because you know their type. We already touched on that. And doing all of this gives you self-actualization. If you want to be happy in this world, you need to reach top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, self-actualization. If you do not have self-actualization, you're not going to be happy. You're just going to be content. I am so sorry if you're content. If you're content, chances are you're not even growing because, you know, the river stops flowing, you've become stagnant, and then actually you're more closer to death that way because you are stagnant, because you're not moving, because you are not growing. The only proof of life that there is is growth. Without growth, you cannot have life. You cannot be happy. You cannot reach self-actualization. Now let's look at the nurture side. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, I use a lot of religious lines and quotes from famous people like Jesus Christ, etc. I'm not here trying to sell religion on you. I don't care about religion. I don't care about organized religion. I don't care. What I care about is wisdom, and wisdom can be taken from almost any source. If it's wise, I want to hear about it. I want to know about it so I can understand it and apply it to my life, and I'm going to help you do that with yours. So, how can you love yourself if you do not, or how can you love others if you do not love yourself first, right? Love your neighbor as yourself actually implies selfishness. That means you need to be selfish, responsibly selfish, but if you are being responsibly selfish and meeting your own needs, having personal standards, having personal boundaries, and having personal goals, knowing yourself, that means you are able to love your neighbor because you love yourself right? So you need to learn how to love yourself properly so that you can love others and be in relationships with them, right? Self-actualization, right? So you need to take responsibility for meeting your own needs. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Robert Glover, PhD, who wrote No More Mr. Nice Guy for that amazing insight. Yes, exactly. That's what that's all about. You have to take responsibility to meet your own needs. If you are not meeting your own needs, good luck. Like seriously, if you're raising a child, stop asking the child, oh, hey, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Actually ask the child. So one day you're going to have to meet your own needs because I'm no longer gonna be able to meet your needs. Did you know you have needs? What are you going to do when you grow up to meet your own needs? You get your children prepared to meet needs and then you help them understand that they need personal standards. Personal standards are the rules or creed or processes or routines that a person lives by so that they can meet their own needs, right? Having standards. And then personal boundaries is what someone uses to enforce those standards on others so that those other people do not inhibit them, do not inhibit the individual from meeting their own needs. You know, kind of like certain sovereign nations should be doing, but then again, they're not really sovereign because they're just letting everyone else walk all over them all of a sudden. Like, that's weird, you know? But yeah, that's what it means. Personal boundaries. By enforcing personal boundaries of others, you are preventing other human beings from inhibiting you from meeting your own needs because that's what you have to do. You have to meet your own needs instead of sucking off the tit of somebody else. Maybe you should be focused on producing more than you consume for once. Oh, but instead we have to go to college and get giant amounts of debt or we have to be on welfare. You know, so okay, yeah, sure, some people need welfare and that's fine, they could be on welfare. But the point is, they get stuck on welfare sometimes, right? I mean, it does happen, we've heard the stories, and that's because these people are stagnant. They get stuck and they're not meeting their own needs. They're depending on somebody else to meet their own needs. We need to be mature and meet our own needs, right? And then because we've met our own needs and we have standards and boundaries, we and have focused so long on meeting our own needs, we can have personal goals. What does that mean? You actually know what you want. How many times are people like questioning, I don't know what I want, I don't know who I am, I don't know my purpose, I don't know what I want to do. Well, that's because they haven't been focusing on meeting their own needs. Chances are, if they don't know what they want, it's because they don't meet their own needs. Because let me tell you, after you've worked really hard to meet your own needs and your personal standards and enforce personal boundaries, you will, after time, over time, will understand exactly what it is what you want, and you will seek to go get it, and you will finally have a vision or a dream that you can chase because you know exactly what you want because you have met your needs. That's the entire point behind it. 
So let's say you have a, a, a child and they're, they're going to high school and you know, do I have them go to college or do I have them get a job? Honestly, tell them to get a job. Tell them to get their own place. Tell them to get their own transportation. Tell them to be self-sufficient, to meet their own needs. And then after they've done that, tell them, okay, sure, you probably would figure out by then what you wanna do. So then you can go to like Western Governors University, right? For $600 a month or whatever to get unlimited credits for an online education and then boom, you're educated, and then you end up having no debt while having your own place and your own car and your own job and your own life, and it's like, okay, yeah, that's way better, you know, like greater than, you know, way better than like graduating college with $120,000 of debt like I did. Wow, what a moron. And then it all leads to this, above all else, respect thyself. Pythagoras said that, you know, the guy who, taught Socrates, who taught Plato, who taught Aristotle. Above all, respect thyself. If you do not have self-respect, nobody will respect you. And let me tell you the truth. It is better to be hated and respected than it is to be loved and treated like a little bitch. That's a fact. If you don't want it, that to happen, have self-respect. Because when you have self-respect, you have what's called personal sovereignty where you do not allow any other human being to inhibit you from meeting your own needs and seeking your personal goals and reaching self-actualization. Because self-actualization is the pinnacle of human life that allows human beings to actually be happy instead of just being stagnantly content. Personal sovereignty. And if you maintain personal sovereignty at the micro level and you get all of your friends and family together and you enforce or uh, uh, grow their personal sovereignty with each other at that point in time, then all of a sudden your community will care about personal sovereignty, and then your county will care about its sovereignty, and then your state or province will care about your sovereignty, and then your nation will care about its sovereignty, and then everything all works together so that everyone can meet their goals, their aspirations, their dreams, and not allow anyone else in the world to inhibit them from doing so. That's the point. Personal sovereignty is everything. Because remember, if you have a sovereign man, then you can have a sovereign nation. And it doesn't matter, any nation on this world can be sovereign. Every nation in this world should be sovereign, and they should be treated with mutual respect. Because if you do not have self-respect, how the hell is anyone else going to respect you? But if you do have self-respect, then you can start having mutual respect for your fellow man. And that, my friends, will create and solve the problem of the epidemic of immaturity, and it will create and garner the sacred, mature masculine and the sacred, mature feminine, so that we finally have fathers in homes, and the fatherless generation disappears. Children will finally have their identity and they will be able to move forward and bring that maturity generation after generation after generation, that personal sovereignty generation after generation after generation. And we will finally have a world, a better world to live in instead of the dump that is our first world society nowadays because, you know, I mean, a giant desert full of immature people who are ignorant and wow. Why do I do this? My daughter, when she comes of age, I want there to be a mature man, a man of respectability, a man of nobility for her when she reaches age, when she comes of age. It is so important. I don't want her to find, I don't want to find her with some man child that I don't respect. Like that's a nightmare. What father wants that for, her, for their daughter anyway? Or my son. For example, I want to be able to respect him when he comes of age, that he is a man of respectability, that he is a man of nobility. And even more than that, I want my son to be able to respect me. This is why I do what I do. This is why I am here on csjoseph.life doing what I do for you and for me so that I can have self-respect by telling you the truth and so that we can have mutual respect as we're growing together so that we can grow our maturity and grow our personal sovereignty to have a better world tomorrow for our children. That is why I'm doing this. So with that, thank you for visiting my website. Uh, feel free to send me a message on the contact page. Feel free to sign up for the email newsletter. I'm not gonna spam you. There'll be private content available through there. Uh, feel free to hit me up for coaching if you want. 
We're going to be producing additional content uh, and additional podcasts and additional mobile apps in the very near future uh, for some a lot of interesting purposes. Who knows what the sky's the limit, if you know what I mean. But thank you for your support and thank you for coming and let me know if there's anything I could do for you.